cafe anyway. Hey, hey. Mike's Daily Podcast. F episode. F, 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 F episode. <coughs> Excuse me, 2465 2465. Mike's Daily Podcast. At Cafe Anyway. I don't have COVID, I don't think. I just decided to sneeze, but that's not nothing that I should apologize for. I did a little bit of vacuuming here at Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, and that's why we say. Anyway. Anyway, Cafe Anyway. And I feel another one. Mike's. Daily podcast. Oh no, false alarm. <sighs> Sneezing. Isn't that a joy? Yes. Mike's so daily. I am going to podcast. Do this podcast now. Yeah. Hey, I just got messaged by somebody. A retired recruiter just messaged me. And on LinkedIn. What do you think of LinkedIn? Is it useful? Is it helpful? Do you know what it is? Is it any good? Do you, I post the latest ep- 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 episodes of Mike Staley podcast on it, but I don't know, you know, if that's uh, helpful in any way. Using LinkedIn pictures and other clues that uh, hiring managers search committee members and at times certified HR professionals and recruiters. Oh, and other cues to guess job applicants, races and ethnicities is wrong. There you go. LinkedIn is launching its second creator accelerator program. Tech influencers trying to get a $12,000 grant. And Tech jobs are in a boomerang. Interesting. This is... Wow. Tech just kept hiring, just kept rising, rising and rising, at least to the end of last year. And here's today's podcast picture. And now it's coming down much faster, said the LinkedIn principal economist Guy Berger. He told Yahoo Finance. And this is on AOL. Shopify. That was big. Wasn't that big for a while? That stock was pretty big. I remember uh, hosting, not hosting, producing a show. The host was Rob Black, Mr. Very Knowledgeable Guy in the World of Finances. I remember somebody calling in. Oh, the late, great Basil the Boxer. Oh, and I found out about Basil. Basil had passed. While I was doing Rob's show, I found out early in the morning, on a Friday morning at about 8 o'clock, I found out about Basil's passing. I think today we will post a podcast picture of Basil. I don't know when, if it'll be a young picture or older picture. I used to post pictures of him all the time. I haven't done it lately, but let's do it now. We'll post it at mikesdailypodcast.com. Do I want to work for MTA New York City Transit? (laughs) I don't even live there. Why are you asking? Spam. And unsubscribe. So yeah, Shopify recently joined the ranks of tech companies. This was uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact. Laying off employees, announcing that it was set to cut 10% of its workforce. The recent tech layoffs and hiring freezes stems from a so-called boomerang effect. Uh, This uh, tech economist guy from LinkedIn says, I would say it's kind of like a boomerang in that it went up faster and is coming down more sharply. I think this is because to some extent, the sector really overextended itself towards the tail end of the bull run. And now it's the epicenter for pulling back fastest. It's notable that layoffs have especially uh, involved smaller tech companies that grew too quickly throughout the pandemic, like digital mortgage originator, better delivery app, GoPuff. I have no idea those ones, but I do know this one, Redfin. 
the online real estate brokerage and fitness tech startup Tonal. However, what's most important from here is whether those layoffs ultimately spread across tech and into other sectors. Yeah. While we've seen some layoffs at bigger tech companies, so far most large companies have instituted hiring slowdowns and freezes. This in- includes the companies, the big A ones, Apple, Alphabet, Alphabet is Google, and Meta, which is of course Facebook. Ultimately, despite hiring slowdowns in tech, workers still have lots of agency in this labor market as it stands. Gosh, they make so much money in tech. It's ridiculous. That's why the rent is so crazy big in the Bay Area, especially near San Jose and Silicon Valley. And oh, now house, houses are not selling. People are putting houses on the market. Yours truly had to recently when my mom passed away. And that, my real estate agent, and I heard this from other people as well. Their real estate agent said, oh, it's gonna, we're going to put it on the market. It's going to sell. We're going to have a couple open houses. It'll sell like that. Me trying to snap my finger. Here at Cafe Anyway, somewhere in Podcaster Valley. Where it is frowned upon to snap your finger here at Cafe Anyway. Don't, don't. Don't do it, Mike. Don't. So, yes, people putting houses on the market and they're just staying there. And this reminds me a lot of 2008 when I finally, after going through a long period of going through that horrible thing that uh, um, probate, I almost called it prostate. That's not good either. Probate. You need one if you're a guy. Probate is what I went through when my father passed away. And that took forever. And when I finally got through it, I could sell the house. And guess what? It was 2008. And that's when the housing market also had a big bust, as you well know. And the the economy did really badly. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley. The last place on earth. Workers still do have lots of agency in this labor market as it stands. The current unemployment rate in the U.S. is 3.6%, far lower than the 13% rate hit. It hit in the second quarter of 2020. Yes, not that long ago, after the onset of the pandemic. Whatever happens in the labor market going forward, it's still extremely tight. There are indicators that the employment rate is back around where it was before the pandemic. And if you look at other indicators like job openings, hires, quits, it's even tighter than that. So there are opportunities for workers that switch to get pay, to get raises. And that's definitely one way you can take some of the bite out of inflation. As you know, you hear it over and over and over again. And it's interesting because... More of your left-leaning news outlets are like, inflation is not that big of a deal. It's not as big as everyone's saying. It's not. Meanwhile, you listen to conservative-leaning media. It's all, oh, it's terrible. It's all Biden's fault. It's all f- coming apart at the, at the seams. Gas prices are going up, 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 up. Well, at the moment, they're coming down, down, down. But we'll see how long that lasts. And it's all about inflation, inflation. But the fact remains that there, it's still the employment rate. It's not as bad as it could be. And as usually as it gets when inflation goes up. Uh, now I'm out, now I'm not, now I don't know what I'm talking about. Now I'm outside of my range of knowledge with economic matters. Outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcaster Valley. Look who's here. Hi, Mike Matthews. It's really too hard to get a job supervisor. Even though the economy is going really badly and the inflation is going up and the guy that was supposed to raise interest rates, that guy, Powell guy, he raised them or whatever. And like now it's not so bad anymore, Mike Matthews. Exactly. See, that's where I get all my financial advice is from Shelly Schuhart because she runs the gift shop. So she would know. That's right, Mike Matthews. Do I sound a lot like Rob Stein? Is it Rob Stein? The guy we were quoting on the last show? <laughs> from, from NPR? The show that was called Typecast. 
Because we were talking about those actors that are typecast, yet they do a phenomenal job and they take they take the role that they get cast in over and over again to all new heights and and actually do something for the role, for the role that they are forced to play. There is a song that I cannot think of what it is. Something about being, oh, being forced through doors. I, eh, shoot, I had it the other day. Oh, no. It, it was some 80s song about being forced through an um, open door. Oh. And maybe I'll think think of it by the end of the podcast. Anyway, cafe anyway. That's what happens a lot of times is we'll, we'll get forced through a door, a, a door that we didn't expect to be pushed through. And we make the most of it. And we become uh, um, a Bob Odenkirk and do a great job with Better Call Saul. And, you know, take it to a whole new level. Or you have a... Uh, the guy that was Al Guinness Who was cast Because he was older Older guy British accent He looked like he'd be a good Jedi And he forever immortalized The Obi-Wan Kenobi And then there was the Ewan McGregor Who kind of reminded people of Obi-Wan Of uh, Al Guinness So now he has to forever play that role And they're just They're fine with it There's Jane Jamie Lee Curtis Who was forever cast in the role from that horror movie It was a Friday the 13th Halloween Whatever Friday the 13th I think I don't really watch Those horror movies But she's forever Cast as that Character And she makes the most of it She says I'm going to use this As a way To Talk about Being harassed And abused And terrorized And domestic abuse And all that And talk about You know How it is to uh, Rise above these things And get through it And look who else is here Whoa, Mike, this is Floyd the Floorman. And this is John Deere, the engineer. Mike, that was really fascinating what you were talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which part? The horror movie thing and being forced through doors unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. That's right. Hey, you know what? I don't know if you noticed this. I pulled this also from LinkedIn. So a lot of stuff from that particular website, which I am on there. I think my handle is Mike... For hire <laughs> But it could just uh, Just look up Mike Matthews I guess Or I don't know But there's a guy named Randy Lane Who is a Consultant for radio stations He's been someone that Radio stations pay big money for And supposedly He helped discover Big name celebrities Who started out in radio Like Jimmy Kimmel and uh, Ryan Seacrest Everybody everybody lays claim to Ryan Seacrest Poor guy He's not a poor guy He's a very rich guy But he Randy Lane was Who I sat next to At a wedding once years ago In Santa Monica There are many different This was a wedding by the way Where they released butterflies As sort of a ceremonial thing And as soon as they did The seagulls flew in and went after the butterflies. It was pretty horrific. Plus, it was really windy because it was at the beach and the butterflies didn't stand a chance to, in the wind. It's really cruel. There are many differences in the listening experience to radio and podcasts. Podcasts are more of a time investment. You're actually spending time with me. Thank you. Whereas radio shows are typically listened to in short spurts. Podcasts are usually focused on a theme. Guess what the theme is for this show Yeah It's not that easy is it And radio shows Generally cover multiple topics Like yours truly does There are Many similarities And one is That listeners On radio shows And podcasts Form a bond With the personalities Who share their viewpoints their quirks, their flaws, and personal stories. The relationship with listeners is deepened by talents who are brave enough to be vulnerable. That's right. That's why this podcast is a roaring success and had one download, I think, three days ago. 
So that's good. That's good. I'm following this advice is really helping. Radio shows lose the most listeners when talent starts talking out of music or commercials. Non P1 car listeners, those are people that aren't like devoted, absolutely dedicated, huge fans of that particular radio station. They give less than 10 seconds before they switch. They are very fickle. So you should start your content segments with a grabber headline to maintain the listenership. So similarly, podcasts generally lose the most audience at the one minute and five minute mark. People stick around a little bit longer. So starting with a headline and getting into content quickly minus the chit chat is crucial. Ramping up to a story will lose listeners on both platforms. I can tell this guy does not like podcasts. Most older people don't. Most like older. It, it, I think podcasts really go well. The millennials love podcasts. Some Gen Xers like it. You get to baby boomers, forget it. They're like, what? What's a podcast? What's a pod? Why am I opening up a pod? Open the pod bay doors, Hal. Why is Donald Sutherland screaming at me and going, ah, He's an invader of the body snatcher from a pod. Start stories with a hook headline f- without giving away the story, that kind of thing. Then eh, whatever. I, I agree and disagree with this guy and have had done so over most of my career in radio. Just that type of mentality of shut up and play the record. That's what that is. That's really what that is. Hey, what do you think? 336MM daily, 3 plus 3 equals 6. MM is in Mike Matthews. Daily is in what this podcast tries to be. Sometimes gets interrupted. Call now. 336MM daily. By things like yesterday, there was a bunch of things. And then, you know what? I'm going to be vulnerable and tell you what they were. Mike was tired and thought he might have had COVID, but I did not. Thank you. Thank you, God. Uh, what... If you are having COVID and have gotten through it or in the process of having it, I wish you, wish you so well. And maybe listening to this podcast has helped a little bit. The last podcast, we talked a lot about COVID. So you might want to go back and listen to that one, which was entitled Typecast. Not sure what this is going to be called, but I will call it a day. And thank you for listening. You can also email me. And to do that, there is a frame telling you how. Mike's TV podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.